Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the CLL. You um, had a trial presented from uh, your university. That's right. Uh, could you tell us yeah. about something? So this is a very exciting trial that has made the news and uh, certainly uh, uh, given a lot of attention to, to uh, our program. Um, and that's the trial of chimeric antigen receptor modified autologous T cells or CAR T cells, CAR19 T cells, because uh, uh, the vector that's used to uh, trans uh, affect the T cells is a, a chimeric antigen receptor that recognizes CD19 mm. and also is capable of uh, s signaling. Um, upon binding CD19 uh, with with the portions of the uh, um, T cell receptor that cause T cells to to react, um, and uh, so basically the way this works, this study was has been done in um, only 12 patients so far, two with ALL and 10 with CLL. Um, patients T cells are collected, they're expanded in the lab, they're infected with a lentivirus vector that has this chimeric antigen receptor. Uh, in the in the virus, mm -hmm. that uh, chimeric antigen receptor is expressed. It's expressed on the surface of the cells. They're capable of binding to CD19, and because there is a co-stimulatory domain that's part of this chimeric receptor, they're they're on. They don't okay. need the second co-stimulatory signal, and they kill. Mm -hmm. And uh, clearly, they do. The patients in uh, the CLL patients that were presented to this meeting, three of them had complete responses, which are all ongoing, and uh, I believe four had partial responses. And we're we're learning uh, some of the toxicities and some of the uh, uh, also some of the uh, mechanisms by which these cells uh, uh, work. What uh, you, we we looked, for example, at the, at at the expansion of these cells after infusion, and that seems to relate to, to the response rate. We've learned about it uh, as the uh, expansion occurs, there could be delayed tumor lysis syndrome three or more weeks later. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's not something that's ready for practice yet, obviously, but uh, it's a new paradigm, the ability to take the immune system uh, and in vitro direct it towards a target, give it back, and, uh, uh, and successfully treat cancer. So I suspect this is a model that will be used for other cancers as well. It, it, it seems to be quite uh, laborious to do that. I mean, to, to collect the cells, to, to activate Well, them. to collect the cells is a leukophoresis, okay? okay? It's a few hours. Uh, um, to grow, expand the cells has been pretty much worked out. We use uh, CD3, CD28 uh, coated beads, um, which uh, causes T cell expansion, and then the virus, Ha, you know, has to be uh, uh, added to infect uh, mm -hmm. the cells, and it depends on successful infection of cells and and, uh, and continued expansion. But the doses uh, were only in the order of 100,000 uh, cells that were able to uh, um, have clinical effects because mm -hmm. they expand in vivo. Okay. So um, it's technically demanding, but I think it can be developed. Okay, great, good to hear. Anything else from CLL which you think is really uh, interesting? You, you well, the game changers are the kinase inhibitors, and okay. so um, uh, and where they're going to fall uh, uh, in terms of frontline therapy. Um, clearly, their um, um, salvation for some patients that have relapsed disease uh, remains to be established. But these uh, these agents, ibrutinib um, and the PI. Uh, Three kinase delta inhibitor, uh, uh, idelalisib. Idel it's, it's previously Cal 101, then GS 1101. Okay. It now has a name, okay. idelalisib. You okay. have to practice it. It yes. doesn't roll off the tongue as easily as I brute it. Okay. Is there anything kind of um, coming already to the clinic, or is it all far away? Is it, there any change? They're, they're all in clinical trials right now, but they're in phase three clinical trials that are rapidly accruing, and I suspect that. Uh, by 2014, they'll be here, and uh, they will become part of standard therapy. That's that's how active these agents are, and they have very favorable toxicity profiles as well. Okay, so there's no uh, obvious change at the moment, but there's really no, change on no. the horizon. There's lots of uh, active agents. Uh, uh, the kinase inhibitors I mentioned, lenalidomide has activity as well. Uh, there was data presented there in CLL. Um, how these agents will be added to our existing agents and what combinations, uh, et cetera, that all has to be established. But right now, as we stand here, um, the frontline therapies 
outside the setting of a clinical trial are, are what we're all familiar with, FCR for younger patients, mm -hmm. arbendamustine for older patients, etc. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's still the same. So nothing changes in that sense at the moment. Um, just for the moment. Just soon. It's just the moment. <laughs> it will okay. be different. Okay, just one more question regarding predictive markers. I mean, you, in the CLL, also follicular lymphoma, uh, for me, there's not much going on regarding predictive markers. All those agents are tests given to all the patients. Do mm -hmm. we have something where we can select on? Um, well, I can tell you that, for example, we know that um, CLL patients that have deletions of... Um, um, 17P, you know, the P53 um, do particularly poorly uh, with chemotherapy-based uh, regimens. Um, the data with the kinase inhibitor looks far superior. So whether that's a prognostic marker for, or whether that's a finding which would tell us how best to treat our patients, uh, um, you know, I think from the data that exists, we can conclude that maybe those patients with uh, um, that marker would be best served with a kinase inhibitor as opposed to chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. So that would be a predictive marker for response. Uh, in CLL. There, in CLL. Mm -hmm. There will be predictive markers uh, from the lymphoma trials that are uh, uh, will become available. I know that there being um, uh, a lot of data is still being analyzed in terms of biological predictive markers mm -hmm. or bio, so-called biomarkers. Mm -hmm. um, from a, a clinical standpoint, um, um, I think that uh, in in the uh, follicular lymphomas, uh, there, you know, the the regimen, the new regimens like bendamustine, uh, rituxan versus Archop, for example, or RCVP, uh, the the same uh, types of markers that always held up um, still seem to be uh, holding up. You know, uh, low IPI mm, or, okay, I, or low flippy, low flippy too, yeah. but does better than high flippy and uh, et cetera. In CLL, um, you know, uh, the lesions of 11Q and, and 17P do do poorly. Um, and in fact, our, I, I think it, in the very near future, our initial choice of therapy will be based, in, in the setting, case of CLL, be based on cytogenetics. We're not that far along in- Cytogenetics. So, well, cyto fish cytogenetics, interface okay. uh, okay. um, um, in situ uh, hybridization cytogenetics. Okay. Good. Thank you very much. It was very interesting. Okay. Nice and to nice to you, have Jan. you here. Nice Thank to be you. in Zurich. Thank you. Bye-bye.